Sing in the word, baby. Sing in the word. How's everybody doing? Feeling good? Feeling happy? Life's good? Life's wonderful. So please stand and turn to someone and say, thank you for being a blessing in my life. All right, sit down. I got some preaching to do. You're well. Excellent. <laughs> ah, life is good, 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 good. So, did Linda mention that this is our last Sunday here? <laughs> Anybody mention that? Okay, good, good. Yes, I know, news. Now, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, it's a fascinating, somebody's going to call next week and go, now, when are we moving? But um, it's all right. And they'll come, somebody will come here. Yes, somebody's going to come here. It's okay. So here's the deal, just a quick update. My great walk, my, I loved Shemaine's song, How to Walk Consciously, because isn't that what this is all about? How to be more conscious in our walk through the world. And um, just, you know, part of my great lesson in getting to move into general contractor mode for this last three months has been um, just so many lessons, but one is, is there's what you can control and there's what you can't control. And peace comes when you recognize that and you stop stressing over what you can't control. Um, so we are, you should plan, even today, you should plan next Sunday to come to 332 Bugatti Avenue in the Times Square Business Park across from R.C. Willie for a lovely and wonderful celebration service. Yes. And the only reason there's a hesitation is because we don't have an occupancy permit yet. Um, you know, <laughs> we have to still are, have yet to drill the hole that connects our sprinkler system to keep us all safe with the actual water system in the street. And so it's going to happen Monday. You know, they told me it would happen on Monday. They weren't real specific about which Monday it was going to be. So um, we're assuming they must certainly mean this Monday, right? And I'm pleased to announce that our carpet is somewhere in the world. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've had baggage get lost, but, you know, carpet, really? No, it's, it's working. So, so, you know, it's going to be just an interesting week, and there's what we can control, and there's what we can't. But I'm planning, I'm, I'm preaching somewhere on Sunday morning next week, and uh, I may stand outside and preach the word, I don't know. Um, if for some reason all of the stars do not align in whatever, we'll let you know by email. And uh, did anybody get this, did anybody record this when she said she'd stop nagging us? Did anyone get that on tape or anything? So, um, Okay, good. So um, if, if not, if for some reason it doesn't happen, next week we will officially have a precation, um, which is you can be, stay home and pray there, uh, but I'm not expecting that to happen. We don't have an alternative plan. It's just the logistics of that are crazy. So, you know, like I said, it's like when you watch those shows on, those remodeling shows on HGTV, it always happens, you know, that people are walking in the door as they're putting the last little flower arrangement out and they're going out the back door. So, you know, we're just doing that. More drama, more effect. You've got to love it. Next week will be a very simple service. Uh, you'll notice we are not in the fully orbed, completed state of being. It will be chairs, hopefully on top of carpet. Um, you know, there'll be some things to do. We're not going to serve coffee, so please get your caffeine, caffeine needs met prior to arrival. The next week, we'll move in a little bit more, and it'll just be like, you know, like home. So that's the update. I am, I've been reflecting, obviously, a lot on this uh, as I'm thinking about these laws of consciousness that we like to speak so often of. And this month, as you know, we're, we're looking at the seven spiritual laws of success by Deepak Chopra. And he puts forth a brilliant summary of how the universe works. And here's, what, here's the conclusion that I keep coming back to. There are some spiritual laws at work in our universe. They are immutable, and whether you like them or not, whether you understand them or not, whether you want it to be that way or not, it is what is. 
Now, the great spiritual teachers, I believe, in essence, were trying to help us understand what these spiritual laws are and how to apply them, how to use them in our daily living. And so when you begin to look from an, um, at a level of understanding of all religious traditions, not in how do they differ, but rather how do they all reinforce a similar idea, you begin to see some common themes. One of them is the law of karma, the law of cause and effect that says there is indeed a universal principle that is at work and that we are a part of that. Now, in the Eastern traditions, they speak of karma and they speak of reincarnation and they speak of this idea that you're putting out an energy and the energy flows back to you and um, over lifetimes, you get to work through your karma. In the Western traditions, they have a little different version of it that says you're putting out energy and the energy comes back to you. I grew up with the concept that when this life is all over, then the debt is settled, right? You go up, you go down. Something's gonna happen, right? Um, but in essence, they're both saying the way you show up for life comes back to you. Jesus said it very simply when he said, as you sow, so shall you reap, right? So if you're planting seeds of love, then love is what becomes your crop. Likewise, if you're planting seeds of lesser qualities, that becomes your crop. So I love that idea. The Buddha taught us that all of our tomorrows are based on the thoughts and the feelings and the emotions that we hold today. And if we want a different tomorrow, it depends on what we're thinking and feeling about today. So for me, my progression, my spiritual progression, my spiritual understanding that evolved over time was, so I grew up with that God, you, some of you know this God, the God that rewarded and punished. Anybody know that God? Watched who's being naughty, who's being nice. Oh, that's a different guy. Who's, <laughs> who's behaving, who's not behaving, right? Based on all that information, some kind of decision gets made, and that's eternity. I grew up with that. Many of us did. So there was an evolution in thought for me as I began to embrace the metaphysical principles that said, no, there's really a law of cause and effect. It is not the universe punishing us. You know, sometimes we even bring that idea of karma into uh, that still like the universe. You know, we get so enlightened, like, I no longer believe God's punishing me. I believe my karma is punishing me. Wow, that was a step forward, wasn't it? Right? <laughs> There's no punishment involved. There's just the natural and logical consequence of our thought and our being. It's really simple. So when we begin to understand that, we begin to realize that if this is so, then we are existing in a way of, of living that is all based on choice. You see, so often we don't realize that everything that's happening in our lives is a choice that we are making. Sometimes it's choices that we've made years ago and that have just been subconsciously stored, and now we just react from that level of choice that we made so many years ago. I'm not worthy. I'm going to store that, and then that becomes the filter through which I make my decisions. So this walk of consciousness that we're working on is to realize and to recognize that we can move our level of awareness so that we recognize the choices we're making all of the time. And we can make intelligent choices based on that information. So how does that work? I used an earlier example. I'll use it again because I like it. Selena comes to me and she says, Marty, you're amazing. You're so talented, you're so brilliant, you're so inspired, you're so... And I'm like, yeah, girl, you are so perceptive. <laughs> I agree with you, and I feel good about myself right now. Right? Myrna comes to me. 
And you know when Myrna comes to you, you're in trouble. And she says, Marty, you're an idiot. What the heck were you talking about? Blah, blah, you know, right? And so I feel bad. I disagree. I, but I feel bad about myself because of her opinion, right? But the truth is, if we could back that whole thing up, we would realize that when Selena comes and says something, I take that information, I process it, I choose my reaction to it. And the same is true with Myrna. I, I got to give Myrna a break. She really never said this. Because people are like, you're so mean to him. Why are you so mean to him? <laughs> She is the great light of my life, I have to say. But you see, it's me. I remember one time a great spiritual teacher of mine said, when you begin to understand that what people think of you, no matter what, good or bad, makes no difference, you know you've begun to arrive. You see? Because I live in integrity with who I am. Now, I like it when people like me. I like that better. You know? But they don't have to. You see, this is the power of the choices that we're making. And we're making choices all of the time. Most of them are unconscious. Most of them because we have formed a belief system and then that becomes the filter of the... And we're not even aware that we're making a choice. We just think we're... We say things like, you made me so mad. How dare you? Right? The teachers, the masters, have helped us to realize that there's a way of being in the world that is different. You see, throughout the ages, there are, it's as if there's two simultaneous universes. There's one that is the spiritual universe. It is the level of pure potentiality, as Deepak Chopra calls it. There is an invisible essence that is just emanating. And what quantum physics, physics teaches us is that it's as if this realm of form that we see and experience is an illusion. If we could see what was really going on, we could see that life is just blinking, in a sense. That existence is coming into being and going out of being, coming into being and going out of being. That there's this whole activity at a quantum level taking place. But it's happening so fast that we believe and sense as if it is true, it is so. And so we say, wow, that's real. But what the, what, what, where quantum physics has come to, which is where the great spiritual traditions have been for many, many years, is an understanding that there's a level at which form is illusion. What is real is a spiritual reality. So through, through the ages, there have been shamans and spiritual teachers who teach us that there's two different dimensions. There's the spiritual dimension and there's the physical dimension. And that our lives are healed and blessed as we begin to understand that it is the cause that creates the effect. There's a spiritual cause behind every form. So when we are experiencing challenge in our life, one way to try and solve it is to change the form. The better way I've discovered is to change the cause. If there is a creative intelligence at work and it is operating through me and as me at the level of my belief, then the, way, the experience that I'm having of the world is an outpicturing of my consciousness. Yippee, good news. Because if I do not like what's happening, if I'm willing to accept responsibility for having participated in the creation of it, then I can participate in the new creation. As we're moving into this building, it's an amazing thing. I, I, I just keep reflecting on this, that this idea that we had and we've held and we've been working on for some time is now becoming a reality that the idea that we drew out on paper is now a real live experience that we'll all get to have next week. And what I've noticed about that is that it's come into being, one, because we have done the conscious work to have that be. 
And we as a community have begun to shift our belief system about who we are. You see, for 40 years, I always like my 40 years analogy, this community has wandered through the wilderness <laughs> with frequent stops along the way. We've met, from what I understand, in bars, in mortuaries, in, uh, in a sound studio, in a cave, in a, in a barn, in a, you know, it's like we've been there, right? And so this time, we have consciously created a reality. And then we looked at that and went, wow, that's going to take more money than what we're currently doing. So we, as a community, said, can we do this? And we said, yes, we can do this. And amazingly, our money has risen to meet the occasion. Because cause leads to effect. But so often in our lives, we make decisions based on the effects. What's possible? What exists? Well, I'd like to do this, but I don't have the money. Money being an effect, right? But when we get clear on vision, when we get clear on possibility, and we realize that the universe is simply resonating with what we're resonating with, then all things become possible. We begin to plant new seeds and new crops come forth. I just happened to catch this brief interview this morning as I was grabbing some coffee before I came to, to uh, be with you this morning. And it was on um, this lovely interview, and I don't know the woman's name, but she is the youngest self-made billionaire in the world. Now, was it Victor Hugo that said, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come? She had a need. I love this. I'm, I got to tell the story. She had a need because, ladies, you know, sometimes you put on an outfit and you can see your panties. <laughs> the infamous panty line. <laughs> she had a similar experience. And so she got creative thinking going and realized there must be some other way, ended up cutting out the feet of her pantyhose and realized that solved a problem. Went and took that idea and created a little company called Spanx, which now sells $500 million of undies a year and became a billionaire. Now, what she said, and I love this, because I'm quoting pretty closely. <laughs> you, know, you know me, it's always an approximation, it's never exact. But she said, essentially, I made an agreement with the universe that if I ever got that right idea, I would act upon it. And so she took her savings, she did all the right things, she set up a patent, she went and made a bunch of calls to a bunch of people that said no. That is a crazy idea. If you ever had that experience, you've got a great idea, you're going to make something happen, and somebody says, what makes you think you can do that, or whatever. I often tell the story about the guy that, the CEO, uh, Mr. Schultz, who, of Starbucks. I don't remember exact numbers, so I'll make one up. I think it was like 250, 260. He went to 200 or so potential investors to say, I have this great idea. It's a little localized coffee shop off of the model of what they do in Italy. And he got, however many times he asked, he got one less than that, no's. Now, how would you like to be one of those people that sat across the table and had this guy say, I've got this idea and I think something could happen, it's called Starbucks. Like, nah, that'll never work. <laughs> Nobody's going to go buy a $4 cup of coffee, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. But the first 249 did, didn't they? So this gal had this idea, and she said, you know, through my, these are her words, through my intention, I manifested my vision. Here is a person that gets cause and effect. 
So often, as I said, in life, we want to operate from the level of effect. We choose to see what's possible for our lives based on reality as we know it now. When we looked at this building, and we kind of drew some numbers together, and I went, hmm, that's interesting, because I know what we have coming in. And that looks like more. <laughs> Not great with math, but I can, you know, the obvious things I can figure out. Um, and yet, something changed. We got the power of the idea, the power of the intention. It said, yes, it is time for us as community to stop this wandering in the wilderness and to come home. Now, this is not our final destination. It is our five to seven year destination, though. And that's exciting. You see? At some point, we will go and buy the next thing, and we will land ourselves for good. But for the next five to seven years, we, we know where we will be. And we know that it's not the building that creates the ministry, it's the ministry that has manifested the building. Very clear on that. In our own lives, we should recognize that we have the same power. We have the power. If we're living in an impersonal universe, it's not the universe withholding our good. It is our own faulty beliefs. It is our own mistaken identity. It is our own formulation over maybe many years that said this is not possible. And because we have believed it to not be possible, guess what? It's impossible. But when we're willing to embrace that cause leads to effect, and we introduce a new cause and a new possibility and a new potential with belief, and then being willing to take action to bring that about, then all things become possible. Those are the promises that we have been given. And they're true whether you look at Eastern tradition or whether Western tradition. Now, we should recognize that, you know, Somebody said it, the universe has 10,000 eyes, meaning it's always watching. So um, when we get this, that cause and effect, in a sense, are the same, if it's an emanation, then we want to really look at being conscious about how we're showing up in the world. Ours, as I say all the time, ours is not a teaching about what we do for an hour on Sunday. As our hour on Sunday is to give us an idea that we end up working with with the whole week. And then sure enough, Uncle Marty says, hey, you want to be more loving this week? And then somebody's going to show up for you to let you practice. <laughs> Sometimes they make it easy, right? Sometimes we have to work on getting there. But nonetheless... But when we really begin to understand this, we begin to realize that it just makes sense to operate from the highest level of consciousness that we can all of the time. I love what the Buddha has taught us. You may not have heard this before. The Buddha in the three sermons says this. If an evil person, an unconscious person is a better way to say that, if an evil person criticizes someone who is virtuous... It is like spitting at the sky. <laughs> you can see why I like This is the under day, underwear and spit day, by the way, in case, you know, you were wondering. That high-minded stuff that I bring forth for you. <clears throat> he goes on to say, the spit doesn't dirty the sky, but returns to pollute the person who spits. When you go outside today, you can try this for yourself. Spit directly up in the air and see how it changes the universe, right? But you see, that's what happens. We think sometimes that by our withholding of love, by our withholding of peace, withholding of whatever, that we're going to somehow punish someone. But the truth is, the law and cause and effect are all within us. It is our karma. We are building our karma, karma moment by moment, thought by thought, action by action. And so it makes us want to be a more conscious person, doesn't it? We're not being punished by the universe. It's simply the way it works. <clears throat> so we get a wake up. Now, 
we can transcend karma. This is the good news. Jesus spoke very much about forgiveness, choosing love over every other option. To always love, to those who have harmed us, love them. To those who persecute us, pray for them. In other words, bring high level of consciousness. As I've been thinking about this, if we remember the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our karma as we forgive others' karma. is a really interesting take on that whole idea, isn't it? Not about debts, but about our own consciousness. And so Jesus and the Christian tradition teaches us about forgiveness. The Buddha teaches us that the source of our suffering comes from our resistance and from our attachment. So we must be willing to release. So the questions we want to ask ourselves as we're moving through the world, realizing that in moment by moment we're making choices, is what are the consequences of the choice that I am making. Right now, this is why I say, you know, uh, there's that part of me that just says, really? Do you really want to say that? <laughs> I know it's right there on the edge of your tongue. I know it's funny. I know it's mean, but, you know, it's still kind of funny. Sometimes I catch it, you know, right? Because is that the energy that I want to put out in the world? So what are the consequences of the choice that I'm making? And then does this choice bring me and those around me happiness? Right? So sometimes those short-term things don't bring us lasting happiness. Sometimes we do things that make us feel good in the moment, but over the long haul, don't serve our highest good. So in looking at this, our power, I believe, resides in our capacity to be conscious choosers. When I forget that I am at choice in each and every moment, it's easy for me to move into a mentality of victimhood. That the, that the economy is doing something to me, to those bad people are doing something to me, that the, my boss is doing something to me, my spousal unit is doing something to me. Somebody's doing something to me that's preventing me from having my greater good. And I'm not happy about it. Right? But when I get conscious, I remember there's that moment of choice in all that is happening. And in that choice, I cannot control or choose everything that happens to me, but I can always be at choice of how I respond to what's happening. And I can choose love, I can choose to raise the vibration, or I can choose some lower level way of approaching it. I've done both. What I know is that when I make the lower choice, there is a karmic debt that will be paid for it. Likewise, there's a karmic debt that will be paid for love. It just happens to be love, which I enjoy more. <laughs> right? There's a conscious choice that comes when we make abundant choices that recognize the divine as our source. And there's, choice, there's karmic debts that are paid when we make lesser choices that think our good comes from other sources. So this walk, as Shemaine was saying so beautifully, is we get to keep helping each other be more conscious in our walk through this world. To be reminded of who we truly are. That we are each divine emanations of this one living experience. That each of us is a place giving the divine a way to experience and express itself uniquely and powerfully. What a gift that is. <clears throat> If we want to be more powerful, if we want to have a more powerful experience of the divine, then we would do well, I think, to realize that first of all, the universe is not playing favorites. The person next to you is not lucky, right? Oh, here's this gal, oh, she's so lucky. I had that same idea. I didn't, I don't wear pantyhose, but... Um, <laughs> 
as a general rule, let's just, you know. <laughs> Right? But you know, isn't that so like every once in a while you see this product, you go, I thought about that. So she thought about it and she acted on it. She made an agreement that if she was ever given the right idea, she would take action. She's a billionaire. She didn't set out to be a billionaire. She set out to solve a problem. And so, does this bring me more joy and happiness? Yes. Does it serve others? Yes. An amazing thing has happened. It's cool. So just understand, I believe this so firmly, that the universe is always conspiring for our highest good. It's not rewarding and punishing. It's just working through us. And then, if we're not experiencing the level of joy, of fulfillment, of abundance, whatever it is, it is simply an opportunity to resonate in a different way, at a higher level. It is an opportunity to bring forth greater good through the power of being. So here's what I would have you know, that wherever you are on this journey, don't feel bad if you're not manifesting perfectly. Just recognize you've participated in what is. And you can participate in the new what is through a shift in consciousness. And that's what we're all about. So know that wherever you are on this journey, that you are loved, you are supported in being fully who you are. Let us pray together. As we simply turn inward, taking a deep cleansing breath, remembering that we are one with this one life. We did not create the breath, we did not create the mechanism for breathing, but rather we are the extension of life breathing itself in form. And so as we allow ourselves to connect with this divine intelligence, with this infinite being, we're simply recognizing that the nature of the divine is our nature, that what is true for the whole must be true for the parts. And so in this moment, we simply open our hearts to the presence of absolute unconditional love and our minds to divine wisdom. The very portal of our soul is the extension through which spirit knows itself. And so we give thanks this day for the many blessings in our lives. We open ourselves to have a greater experience of the true nature of reality of spirit expressing itself. And so we call forth wholeness as a spiritual quality manifesting and bringing itself into being as perfect health, as vitality, as well-being. We bring forth the presence of abundance, joyously giving and graciously receiving of the infinite bounty that is always available. We speak this word of truth this day as we are simply knowing that love is indeed the only reality. The self-givingness of spirit as it pours itself into existence. And so we allow our hearts and our minds to be transformed through the power of this love. We freely and for forgive ourselves and each other. We choose love over every other option. And our lives and our relationships are healed and transformed through the power of this love. I invite you, if there is a burden on your heart this day, to simply be willing that in this moment of pure potentiality to release that and in its place to accept exactly your highest good made manifest now. How good it is to stand in the awareness that it is the universe's good pleasure to express itself in and through and as us. And so we give great thanks for the many blessings of our life. Today we give thanks for this blessed building that has served us so graciously. We give great thanks for this spiritual community that we co-create, where we come together to be reminded of the truth and encouraged and invited to live from a higher level of conscious living. We give thanks that we are divinely guided in, in our fullest expression. We extend a blessing from this place to bless our brothers and sisters around the planet. 
We're simply holding that high watch, that high vision, seeing a planet at peace and a world that works for everyone. This is the vision that we hold. And as always, we bless all priests, rabbis, ministers, teachers of every faith. For we know there are many pathways to the divine and we honor and celebrate them all. How good it is to stand in this awareness of God being God through us and as us. And so I give thanks. I give thanks for these many blessings. I give thanks for a law of mind that is operating upon the consciousness that we have established here and now. That there is a law of mind at work bringing forth our highest good in perfect timing and in divine right order. For this I am truly grateful and I allow it to be so as together we say, And so it is.